Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Cheryl McComsey, founder of Pesticide Free Alberta. Her website, PesticideFreeAlberta.org. She's speaking to us from Powell River, B.C., where I'm sure you're going to have a pesticide-free organization soon, right? Well, yeah, we have people in different jurisdictions across Canada that are definitely concerned about different applications of pesticides. It's going to take some time before we really get ourselves coordinated. Um, I should tell you that our, our website is down now. We don't have a website yet. So if someone else does, it's probably not us. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Cheryl, you are saying, what are the problems we have with pesticides in our food, our air, our water? Is that the attitudes towards them are, are really, what, uh, don't care, less a fair, or downright negative if you say, well, that's contaminated, why are you selling that? Yeah, I think, first of all, people have no idea of how much is in their food. So, you know, Canada has increased pesticide use by 40% in the last five years, and we don't really do assessments of residues all that often. But when they have been done, um, it's quite concerning to see how much is actually there, how much is in the water. We're not We're not looking for pesticide residues in our water either. Um, it's actually interesting. I found a story in the Western Producer that says it's concerning that we're not looking at pesticide residues in our water. We know it's in the rain. So how much we're exposed to it in the first place is, isn't clear and not being um, evaluated. But we are seeing many, many uh, chronic diseases rising at an alarming rate that are associated with science. And then the other attitude I think that is concerning is that people believe that things are assessed properly and that they're assessed by Health Canada, that Health Canada has laboratories and scientists and all that. But uh, the Pest Management Regulatory Agency is a department within Health Canada that's sort of separate somewhat from other what other scientists do. They have no laboratories of their own. They are dependent on assessments done by the very industry that sells a product. So we assume things are safe, but there is no safe pesticide. They all have what we call acceptable risk, and how that's determined is determined by the industry that sells a product. So our attitudes around pesticides being needed um, and how they're used and how they're regulated don't really match what really happens. Well, we're finding out in the airline industry with the Boeing Max 737, it was the airline who determined that it was safe to fly, and we've seen two incidents where it wasn't safe to fly, and uh, hundreds of people were killed. Is that the same thing that we're doing with the food industry, allowing the pesticide makers to decide what's safe and what isn't? Well, we pretty much are. And what has happened is when a scientist does take a stand in their concerns, like with, for example, with Tyrone Hayes, uh, who is a scientist that was approached by Syngenta to assess atrazine, and he found big concerns with how, how male frogs basically became able to produce A, Really, really disturbing stuff, actually. Um, and that this was a concern that, that there was sexual changes within the frog, um, that they were producing est estrogen. Um, that's what atrazine did. And then he was 
villainized for that. It, it was really quite horrific what happened to this scientist. And I mean, uh, industry will make all kinds of stories about that, but when you actually do a little digging for yourself, you'll find out that this is a very common problem. Um, I and mean, it's not just, I guess, with pesticides, but this is what I'm familiar with. And it's consistent. You'll see, you know, even if you look at past history with Health Canada, for example, the bovine growth hormone was assessed by four Canadian scientists, and they were all fired. And then after this was, uh, you know, addressed in the courts for years and years, you know, two of these scientists were um, given their jobs back if they wanted them. One scientist actually committed suicide. It was quite horrific, the whole issue. So there were concerns around this, and yet uh, when they were brought forward, um, Monsanto actually <laughs> was behind this as well. People are afraid to lose their job, and right now, you know, we, we see this going on with glyphosate that uh, there is, now, 18,000 plaintiffs suing Bayer for their cancer in the U.S. And the uh, attitude towards that is that, well, you know, people just want money. Well, personally, I would rather not have cancer myself. And no amount of money is going to bring my health back if I'm, if I'm facing death by cancer. And 80,000 Canadians die from neoplasms every year in Canada. This is concerning in that we know that about 80% of the risks to cancer are environmental. And when you look at the study, it's, it's kind of remarkable that we have this attitude that these things are not harming us. They are harming us. We'll have more with Cheryl McComsey right after this. Grand Portage Resources' Herbert Gold Project in southeast Alaska highlights increased gold resource, indicated and inferred, of 860,000 ounces, in excess of 10 grams per ton gold. Expansion drilling is planned on the Herbert Gold property for the summer of 2019. Grand Portage Resources trading symbols are GPG on the TSX Venture, GPTRF on the OTCQB, and GPB on Frankfurt. For more information, please visit our website, grandportage.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Cheryl McComsey. Cheryl, how common are contaminated fruits and vegetables in our grocery stores? How common are they? That's really hard to answer because, like I said, we're not properly, we're not even really looking very well at this. Um, the Environmental Working Group in the U.S., you know, they have their, their top 12, they call them the dirty dozen, that have the most pesticide residues. And then they have the cleanest. Um, even then, I'm, I, I feel like this is a guide, but maybe it's not enough. Uh, they don't look at, you know, cereals, for example, and we know that in uh, North America, we're desiccating cereal crops with glyphosate, and some countries are starting to refuse Canadian product because of their concerns with it. So we don't really know what the residues are in our food, and I have to ask why we don't know that. But what we do know is when they are looked at, there's concerns. There's concerns, especially with um, cereals and plant-based proteins, unfortunately, like lentils and chickpeas. We saw that they had above acceptable limits of glyphosate there. So, you know, when that happens, how do we pick that up if it's not tested regularly? If it's expensive to do testing, on all our food, it's probably not going to happen. We always talk about how terrible organic is, but we don't even look at what's really happening a lot of the time to our, our conventional food system. is isn't really being monitored. When people want to, um, for example, file a complaint of abuse of a pesticide, they really have to jump through a lot of hoops to do that. You, you could have damage on your property from a neighbor or a neighboring farm, and you basically have to prove it. 
that this has happened. You have very little protection from it. And not very often are they even investigated. I know this because I've done FOIA and found hundreds of complaints, and I don't see any indication that most of these are even investigated. So it's quite horrific when you start looking at this and how it's working, how it's not working, and the attitudes around it. It's just remarkable. There's a, a organic farmer in Chilliwack who would like to uh, stop spraying on school grounds. Um, I see a picture of a school ground where Roundup is sprayed, a big section of Roundup is sprayed right beside the track, right beside the long jump, and it's completely, the grass is completely burned by this. Just a couple of days before these kids are running around on the track, sweating, breathing this in. Now, we know glyphosate hangs around for a really long time. There's successful lawsuits based on false advertising by Monsanto on this very issue. And yet, people have this attitude that as soon as it's dry, it's gone. Well, it's not gone. It is not gone. It's still there for an undetermined amount of time. You really have to test the soil and the air to know if it's still there or not, and you're exposing your children for what reason? To kill a few weeds that really don't present any risk to health whatsoever? It doesn't even make sense. And that's an attitude that, you know, is changing across Canada, but in some places there's a lot of resistance to it still. Well, we seem to have a government that doesn't seem to care, or is it in the pocket of industry? Well, yeah, there's, it's, it's really hard to draw clear determinations on this. First of all, every pesticide that's registered, um, they are, they have to make a payment for that registration, and, and that's about 25% of the CRMRA's funding. It's just on registration alone. So, it's kind of, I don't know how well that really works. But we need independent studies on all products before they go to the market. And we need to have clarity about um, <laughs> what we call proprietary ingredients. I mean, how can we have proprietary ingredients in our food system? How can we have pesticides that we don't even have to disclose what is in there that we're being exposed to? That's incredible. But that is a fact. So you have to wonder, yes, about the staff who, who we uh, decide is going to do these assessments, if they, where they come from. I know um, in Alberta we had Ted Minty, for example, who was a politician involved in aspects, uh, I guess you could say, of government that would be related to agriculture, and then he became the CEO of CropLift. So we have a revolving door in Canada between government and industry, how much we have of that is not clear, but it certainly is clear in the U.S., and we collaborate with the U.S. We don't really work independently. What is really interesting is um, Chlorpyrifos is about to be reevaluated, and they are not looking at human health concerns whatsoever. And this pesticide is 700 times more toxic than malathion, and it's in our food system. They're not looking at human health effects. They're only looking at environmental effects. So they're looking at removing agricultural uses of this, and interestingly enough, because of its uh, harm to small mammals. But they're still thinking of re-registering this for uh, being used on golf courses, for example, for mosquito control, that kind of thing. Well, would little people be called small mammals? <laughs> I find it quite remarkable um, there is a complete disconnect with how things really work in our world as a whole and what we're really being exposed to and what we could be doing differently. Maybe it's, one thing that humans are, I think, is we're tremendously resistant to toxins. As look at people who go a lifetime of heavy smoking and drinking and are still alive. Technically, they should have died 40 years you know, before they did. And, of course, some people do die. But do you think because I I really believe humans are pretty resilient animals, we almost experiment on ourselves to the, the point of toxicity? 
Well, whether we're resilient or not, that's changing. Uh, chronic disease in Canada is unbelievable. Like we have the Canadian Digestive Health Foundation, for example, states that 20 million Canadians are suffering gut diseases of some kind. I mean, that, that changes, you know, maybe is intermittent kinds of uh, problems like irritable bowel disease and that kind of thing. But 20 million Canadians? That's two-thirds of the problems? population. Yeah. And, and, but this has changed. This is not the way it was 10 years ago. We had 10 million Canadians suffering gut diseases 10 years ago. What about our reproductive issues here? Um, we really have a dec decline in um, reproductive health. Now, people could say, oh, that's great. We're going to, you know, reduce our population. But reproductive health is also an indicator of general human health. Cancer. Every second Canadian is going to develop cancer. That is considered fact. Um, that's also probably going to go up. Now, regardless of how we think of these things, how are we going to handle the cancer coming into our hospitals in the future when the numbers just keep going up? People are not smoking as much as they used to. Of course, now we're vaping more, which is, uh, people are saying is really not better. Surprise, surprise. Taking smoke in your lungs is probably not a good idea, period. But we are increasing the toxins in our environment at a rate that is a serious threat to our survival. And I mean that. There are people talking about the loss of insects, which is incredible, remarkable. And that if we continue on this road, there won't be food to eat. Because if you remove all your pollinators, and we're, we're not tracking wild bees, we're, we're looking at honeybees. And so it's the lack of understanding of how science works and how our world works that we're, we're going to do ourselves in. So Neonix, for example, is another remarkable example um, of pesticides that are actually illegally on the market. They never had the required science submitted. Now, if you and I break the law, we can't just say, hey, well, I'm just going to do this for a little while longer um, so I don't want you to arrest me because I'm just going to do this for a little while longer and then maybe I'll quit a couple of years from now. We can't negotiate that. So how, how does our government justify conditional registrations at all, period, ever? That's what we have. We'll have more with Cheryl McKenzie right after this. I'm Douglas Mason, CEO of Naturally Splendid, symbol NSP on the TSX Venture Exchange. Naturally Splendid is a biotechnology and consumer products company focused on the global cannabis and health markets. Naturally Splendid is expanding distribution in this rapidly growing market with products currently in Canada, the USA, South Korea, Germany, and Australia. To view our comprehensive company presentation and for more information, please visit our website at naturallysplendid.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Cheryl McKenzie. Cheryl, what can people do to be more proactive and to get our politicians to pay more attention to this than some political scandal involving an engineering company? Well, I think people need to start getting a little stronger with their insistence that things change. I mean, we have six legal uh, uh, lawsuits going on now in Canada in regards to glyphosate. I think we need to start holding politicians personally responsible for their neglect and not listening. We have scientists that are saying things to us about concerns with issues around health, and they are not listening. So maybe we need to start looking at personal lawsuits with politicians who are not listening. I don't know. But, um, you know, we need to make a lot more noise, I think. It's not acceptable what we're seeing happening to our children. The You know, it's not just reproductive effects and cancer and asthma and all these things. But um, we're, we're literally poisoning our children, uh, causing brain damage with 
chlorpyrifos, for example. We're, we're concerned about small mammals, but not about our children. So it, these agencies, the people working in them, they need to be scrutinized. And we really need to scrutinize our politicians a lot more closely and start holding them accountable. So maybe that means more legal action, or maybe that just means making a whole lot more noise. But I go to farm. I go and visit farm. I go and talk to farmers. I went to a farmer's market when I was in Vancouver recently, and I was amazed at how wonderful um, what I witnessed with the farmers that I met there. I went to organic restaurants in Vancouver, and I was amazed at, at the food that I was fed there, and the people who are behind these things, we need more of that. We need more of it. I mean, I even went to an organic brewery in Vancouver. They have great beer. Why are we not supporting these people a lot more? And why are we ignoring what we're doing to ourselves? And the whole um, attitude towards organic, it needs to be supported, it needs to have, to make sure that it does not be, uh, become corrupted by the same kinds of problems we have with conventional farming. We need to support conventional farmers to a better system. Cheryl, uh, is there anything else that we should know right now that's really uh, kind of a healthy bee in your bonnet? Well, I feel better now uh, at the age that I'm at now than I did 20 years ago because of the food I eat. I feel that I have more resilience now in many ways because of the food I eat. And I hear that coming from a lot of other people. Uh, it, it, it's more affordable if you uh, convert some of your proteins to plant-based proteins and make sure they're organic. Buy bulk. There's some really great bulk stores in the Vancouver area that are way ahead of the game. We can be reducing our uh, packaging, and, and there is a really cool store in Vancouver that does that too. And they have some organic stuff in bulk there. So we just need to support the right thing. Um, because it's better for us and better for this planet and better for our community and stop villainizing things, uh, just attacking people without looking. That's, that's my advice. And I, I think there's some really great things happening because people are starting to wake up and, and do something. Cheryl, thank you so much for chatting with us. You're welcome, Jim. Have a good week. My guest has been Cheryl McComsey, founder of Pesticide Free Alberta. If you have any questions for Cheryl or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of Howe Street Media Incorporated.